Hi, today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make your own needle felted octopus friend. Why needle felt you ask? Do you feel frustrated sometimes and like you wanna stab something? This is a perfect way to channel that anger while making yourself an adorable friend out of it. So let's get started. Let me show you our, what supplies you're gonna need. You're gonna need some scissors. You're gonna need some kind of fabric friendly glue. I'm using a type of tacky glue. You're gonna need um, some roving wool. This is a special type of wool that you can get at craft stores, yarn stores, that sort of thing. So it's these big fluffy chunks. I have multiple colors because I like to play around with that. You're going to need some kind of surface to stab into, like a sponge. Um, you could even do a folded up dishcloth as long as it's thick enough. And you're gonna need some pipe cleaners. And then your other specialty piece you're gonna need besides your roving wool is you're gonna need, this is called a felting needle. You might um, actually get one or two felting needles because they sometimes break while you're doing a project. But this is a very special type of needle because it actually, the sharp portion of it is this whole area here and there's little saw edges in it. So when you're stabbing it into your little friend here, it actually pulls up and it mats those wool fibers together. So you do need this, this is not optional. All right, so let's get started making one. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna decide which color you want to be the main body of your octopus. Today I think I'm gonna do this lovely like cotton candy pink here. And when I look at it, I am not gonna use this entire piece. I'm actually gonna set a little bit of this wool aside um, for later and I will show you why we're gonna do that. So then I have this nice piece here. What I'm going to do to start up is I'm going to very tightly roll this into a ball. So I'm going to just squish, 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 squish. Roll it into a ball shape. You want to make that as tight, as compact as possible because that means you're going to have to do less stabbing. But don't worry, you're still going to get to do plenty of stabbing if that's what you're here for. All right, so now that we've got our little tight wool ball, we're going to plop it on top of our sponge. The reason we're doing this is because you might have guessed, it's in the name, felting needles are sharp. So you could very easily stab yourself, the surface you're working on. So the sponge is to keep both you and your surfaces safe. Um, please do be mindful though, please don't stab yourself while you're doing this because you have, um, because that just wouldn't be a good time. So now that I've got my ball here, I'm kind of holding it together with my fingers. I'm gonna take my felting needle here and I'm going to stab it into my ball of wool. I only wanna stab it down as far as the sharpness is right there. And then I'm going to remove it again. The important thing to know is you're gonna to wanna to pull it out exactly the same angle that you put it in. You don't wanna twist this or anything like that. That's how you end up with a broken needle. So again, stab in, pull out at the same angle. And then you're just gonna keep doing that. And that is basically the whole thing, is just get stab happy with this ball of wool here. And as I'm probably going a little bit faster than you might want to to begin with, I'm not um, a needle felter by trade or anything like that, but I have done a few hours of this at this point, so. But as you get more advanced, you'll get faster. But keep in mind, as you get faster, the likelihood that you will stab yourself goes up. So be careful about that. One thing you're gonna notice that I'm doing as I'm stabbing this is I am rotating this ball as we go. The reason I'm doing that is because if you stabbed in the same place and just kept stabbing and stabbing and stabbing and stabbing, you're gonna notice you're getting this little dent here. And what you're gonna end up with is not like a nice ball shape, you're gonna end up with like a weird oblong, which is what you're going for, great. But if you're trying to get a ball, you need to keep rotating it so you can do it evenly. And so, yeah, one thing to also keep in mind is that this is gonna take a while. And um, you just have to accept that. And if you're doing this to get rid of some anger, that's great because you probably don't wanna stab something just once. Um, if you're doing it for our purposes, think of it as something kind of meditative. Put on a podcast, watch a movie or something, enjoy yourself. And then what you're gonna notice is after 
doing this for several minutes is you're gonna be able to let go of this ball and it'll just kind of sit on its own and not require you to hold it in place. So we're gonna do some time-lapse magic here because you probably don't actually wanna sit for the next however long this takes for this to become a ball that sits on own. Oh look, now see I don't have to hold it together. It's just kind of holding together on its own. But see how fluffy this is compared to this? So this is kind of a completed needle felt project. This is still very fluffy. So we want this whole surface to be kind of firm when we touch it, but still a little squish. So I'm gonna keep felting. All right, so if I was doing my own project here, I'd probably do this for a little bit longer because as you can see, this is still pretty squishy compared to this nice surface. I've got some more floofiness on the top than this one. This is relatively nice and smooth, as much as a wool ball can be. But I wanna show you some things. So one thing I recommend you do, if you're feeling like you're getting close to being done, go ahead and just squish your ball in your hand for a minute and see are there any spots that are firmer than others? Are there some squishy bits that need some more work? For instance, on mine, I can tell this area needs to be felted some more because it's too squishy. So I'm gonna do that. All right, so that's firmed up. I can do some more over here. And then the next thing you can do as you're moving along is take a moment to look and decide how you feel about this shape. I personally don't really like, I have this dimple here. That's probably because of when I was wrapping my wool ball, that was where all the pieces met. And so I've got this dimple. So this is where this extra wool comes in, is the lovely thing about needle felting is it's like sculpting in that um, you can add more to it if you need to, like with clay. It's very malleable, it's very forgiving. So you can just squish it some more and that'll work. So I'm gonna take a little piece of wool here. You don't need a lot, which is another lovely thing when you're doing these little cosmetic bits. I'm gonna just rip that. It's the nice thing about wool roving. When you have the fibers all aligned, you can just pull it. Again, great stress reliever. I'm gonna put my bit of wool on top of my dimple here. And then I'm going to very carefully, because my finger's right there, stab around that. And that is gonna cover up my ugly little dimple there. So yeah, that's not a perfect demonstration of that concept, but you get the idea. Like, just, just slap some wool on it, it'll be fine. It'll cover up all your problems. So yeah, in my opinion, that looks nicer than what I had before. So I'm gonna be happy with that. Like I said, I'd probably do this a little bit longer, but for the sake of our demonstration, now that I have my wool ball, I think there are two ways you could do this. You could put your legs on first or you could put your face on first. I'm gonna put my legs on first because my face is the tricky spit and then I can figure out how to orient it to the legs. So I've got two pipe cleaners here. I'm gonna fold them in half. I'm gonna cut them at the fold. So then I have four equal pieces. And I'm gonna take all four equal pieces, connect them at the top, 
I'm gonna twist that top together. Actually, no, hang on, reverse. All right, so I have my four equal pieces here. Then I'm gonna take my four equal pieces and I'm gonna fold them in half again. So this is giving us our eight octopus legs. I'm gonna twist them together at the top of that fold. So now when I pull them apart, all four all those pieces are connected together, but they're staying together. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my scissors, my scissors, and I'm gonna cut um, a little hole here in the bottom of my wool ball. There's probably a nicer way to do this, but this is the way that I know how to do. We're gonna put some glue on the end of our pipe cleaner here at that twist. Again, you want something that is fabric friendly because like just Elmer's glue is not gonna do the trick here. Okay, never mind. We're gonna do this the old fashioned way. Blob. All right, so got that covered in glue. We're gonna just shove that in there. And you're gonna wanna wait for that to dry. That'll dry pretty quickly though on its own. Gonna arrange our little tentacles. Everyone can see his beautiful tentacles. And as you can see, they're not all the same length, but you know, in real life, from what I can recall from hearing from my biologist friend, real octopuses don't all have the same length tentacles. Anyways, some of them are different lengths to do different things, so. While that's drying, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out my face now. So again, because this is sculpture, you get to decide what the face looks like, but I'm gonna give you some tips um, for however you wanna do your face. So first off, pick what color contrast um, wool you want for the face. I'm gonna do black just cause it's nice, easy contrast to see. And I just want a very tiny little wisp of wool. So I've got this whole long piece here. I'm just gonna rip that. So I just have this piece. Eh, even that's still a little bit too big. We don't need a lot. So as you can see, it's just a tiny little wisp of wool compared to my giant hunk of wool that I was making the octopus body with. Um, say I wanna do a round eye. I'm just gonna very lightly roll this into a vague ball shape. I'm not gonna worry too much about the exact shape, but I want it to be approximate, you know? Then I'm going to decide where I want the eye on here. I think I'm gonna put it right about there. And this eye is much bigger than what I think it's gonna be. But remember, when I felt this, it's gonna compress way down. So I'm just gonna start. And again, we're gonna do the same thing that we did before with our little um, patch pieces. We're just gonna slowly start stabbing through the needle and the eye into the wool. So what I'm actually doing here to make sure that this eye compresses down is I'm pulling with my needle the black and pushing it towards the center so that I'm getting the size of eye that I want. Uh, but say I'm not happy with this eye. Guess what you can do? You can just rip it right off of there. I just ripped his eyeball off. But that's the beautiful thing. Again, this is like sculpture. So if you aren't liking something before you get too far, just rip it off and start over. So I'm gonna take a new little piece of wool. This time I'm gonna do more like an eye like this guy has where it's like, you know, a little, I can't know if you can really see that, but it's like a little round. It's like a little half moon. So I think I'm gonna do that. So again, vaguely rolling this into the shape that we want, nothing too tight. So this time, rather than a ball, I want a line. I'm gonna lay it on there in the general direction I want. But again, this is bigger than my eye's actually going to be because when I felt it, it's gonna get smaller. So just start a little anchor right there in one spot. And then gradually kind of curve it. So again, this is an experiment. This is a sculpture. We don't quite know. We're gonna be happy with how it turns out, but we're gonna keep trying things until we are happy. So that's why I'm saying you get to decide what your face looks like. But as you can see, as I'm stabbing this loose wool, 
I'm pushing it in towards the places I want to be. So if this is still too wide for me, I can grab the edges with my needle and kind of push them in towards the center. All right. So that's one facial feature down. So that's one eyeball. And um, yeah, he's still a little too fluffy for a real effect be done. But then you can just repeat the process with the other eye and the mouse. We'll go ahead and do that, but we'll do this time lapse just so you don't have to sit through all that. So as you can see, I finished his face, got some little mouth. His eyes aren't really the same size, but you know what? That's okay by me because it's my octopus and I can make it look however I want. And I'm gonna name this guy Ferdinand. That's his name, Ferdinand's the octopus. And his eyes are two different sizes and I'm all right with that. And so yeah, you can get really creative with this. This is your sculpture, try things out. Maybe give your octopus a mustache, maybe give him a top hat. It's your decision. You can do whatever you want with that. But here's the final little guy. Here's his friends. And like I said, yours should not be quite this floofy. You should keep stabbing. Just keep stabbing until you get the effects that you like. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today. And just remember, you know, your octopus can look however you want. And please feel free to check into Mesa County Libraries if you're looking for more needle felting ideas. We have some wonderful books about this topic, showing you some different designs and techniques. These ones I showed you today are very basic and I am by no means an expert. So check out some of our materials. Thanks.